As you model the crane, you'll only want to change the CA and CB coefficients for the EZ field, not for the EX or the EY fields, since the crane is only along a string of EZ fields. One efficient way to do this is to define new coefficient matrices, CAZ and CBZ, which can be used only in the regular EZ update equation. So the EX and the EY updates would use CA and CB, and C EZ update equation would be would use CAZ and CBZ. So this is already implemented in the code, and we could go in and manually change the EZ update equation, just the regular update equation, to have CAZ and CBZ, and those would be matrices that cover the whole grid, the size of the EZ fields. These could be set to free space everywhere except at the crane. Except at the crane, which is at I max divided by 2, J max divided by 2, and for K equals 2 to 61. So that since the crane is 1 meter above the ground, we're going to start the crane at k equal 2. Hopefully also before you ran the code, you changed i max, j max, and k max so that you could fit the crane into the model. Usually it is good practice to put at least 20 grid cells between an object and the start of the PML. So I used 60 here, and 60, and in the k direction I used 90. Here are what my two plots look like after changing the frequency of the source and adding in the crane. Notice that we don't see as much of the sinusoidal wave propagating across the screen as we did in the last simulation. This is because we lowered the frequency, which lengthened the wavelength, but we kept Nmax the same. In these results, we can see charge deposited at the ends of the vertical section of the crane, and this is done by the currents flowing along the crane. This is just as it would happen in real life. When current flows along the crane, the electrons are building up at the two ends. Now let's make the amplitudes in our simulation match the real life scenario a bit more so that we can calculate values that have more physical meaning. Assume the radiated power level of the AM antennas is about 10 kilowatts and the gain of a regular azimuthally symmetric monopole antenna over a ground plane is 5.19 dBi, so compared to a, an isotropic antenna. So this is for an azimuthally symmetric monopole. So the reason I point that out is that the actual AM transmitters transmit more of the energy towards our construction site. Take a moment and do two, three things. First, Use your knowledge from ECE 3300 or a comparable undergraduate electromagnetics course to calculate the electric field, E, in the vicinity of the crane. And two, think about how you would account for this electric field value that's in the vicinity of the crane in your FDTD model. So how would you implement this in your FDTD model? And then three, Determine what the output of our model should be.